So, hi everyone. I hope you're having a really good time at the game's job fair. Uh, I heard that maybe a few of you might be looking to get a job in the game industry. So um, I thought I would take this opportunity, this venue, to talk a little bit about how knowing Unreal Engine uh, might help in that regards and also um, in many other regards because Unreal Engine isn't just made for games. There are many other industries that it can um, help you get a job in. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to start by introducing myself a little bit. So, hi everyone, I am Ari. Um, I am an Unreal Engine evangelist at Epic Games. And an evangelist, I often get a question like, what is an evangelist? It basically means that, well, I go to conferences like this and I praise the word of Unreal Engine. Uh, but I also am in contact with uh, every single kind of company that is, or like, that wants to be in contact with me, uh, that is using Unreal Engine. Because um, how we work is that uh, we only succeed when you succeed. So it's my best interest to make sure everyone who's using Unreal Engine succeeds. Um, I am focusing mostly on Northern Europe, and that is the Nordics and the Baltics. So uh, if you are in the Nordics or the Baltics, feel free to reach out to me. My content info is at the end of these slides, but also you can search for, an, for my name. I'm like all over the first two Google results uh, pages. So yeah, I'm really easy to find, I'm really easy to contact. LinkedIn, Twitter, DMs are open, whatever. I am a game programmer. Um, I've been uh, programming now for yeah 15 years, as you can see the 15 years in game dev. Uh, so I have a very technical background. Actually, uh, the last thing I did before I joined Epic Games was as a lead programmer on Returnal. I am Icelandic, so don't try to speak Finnish with me, but I do live in Finland. Uh, I've been living in Finland for the last, yeah, 10 years. And um, I put all my presentations usually up on my website, ari.games. And there's also a lot of different tips and tricks there. I recommend if you are using Unreal Engine or wanting to start using Unreal Engine, check out my website. I put a lot of stuff there. And um, I'm currently recording myself also. So uh, afterwards, I'll probably put this presentation on there um, maybe in a few days or weeks, uh, who knows? And also about Epic Games, so who are we? Well, Epic Games was founded 30 years ago. We are um, in over 15 countries. We have over 50 offices worldwide. We have over 2,600 employees. I keep saying over because I don't know what the number is. Like this slide is over a year old. I just keep incrementing it a little bit and adding a plus. It's in that ballpark. And we won over 50 international awards. And what do we do? So Abbey Games, well, we do two things, uh, mostly. Well, we do a lot of more things now, but what I am focused on in regards with Unreal Engine is that we do publishing of our own games. You might've heard of some of these games like Fortnite, Unreal Tournament, Gears of War, etc. And then we take the technology that we invest into these games and uh, we license it out to other games that uh, companies are making and also non-games. And I think that's actually what I'm going to be mostly talking about today, that is these games and non-games. And it's kind of amazing that we have these two categories because uh, game engines right now, they're really changing the world. Uh, Real-time 3D is kind of revolutionizing the industry right now because there's such a huge adoption, broad adoption is in many industries. Today, knowing Unreal Engine, it's not just good just for games, but all of these things, architecture, film and TV, automotive, broadcast, live events. And um, today's presentation, I think I would actually just go through of the, go through these and uh, talk a little bit about them. So yeah, okay, let's just start with games. Whenever someone thinks of Unreal Engine, um, I think most likely they'll think games. And uh, for a good reason, uh, it has uh, been made for games from the start. And recently we've been adding like all these other verticals to it. And uh, when it comes to games, like it comes complete with everything you need to build and ship successful multi-platform games out of the box. So you have free access to the source code also, which is great for people learning Unreal Engine, because if you don't know how something works, you can just check it out. You can just go check out the source code that these like geniuses at Epic Games have been writing. You can see how they did everything. You can see totally how the sausage is made, and you can learn from that and uh, you can structure your code like we structure ours. And yeah, it's a great learning resource. And whenever the documentation isn't good enough, you always have the most true documentation, which is the source code itself. And 
Even if you're not a programmer, we also have the amazing blueprint visual scripting at your fingertips, which you can use both to you know, create logic for your games, and you can even use it nowadays to extend the editor using blueprints. So you can create basically a custom tool in Unreal Engine without knowing a single letter of C++. And uh, I've been keeping a looping video there of like uh, some of the games that are using Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine. And just some of the examples here, uh, like Final Fantasy VII Remake, an excellent game, I really liked it. And of course I'm biased, but I put Returnal there because I worked on it and I think it's amazing. And uh, I recommend you all play it if you haven't. Um, yeah, Fortnite, of course, the Pathless, Kina, like some indie games also. And the thing is about games, now in Unreal Engine, like it's not just a few of them. Of all announced, currently announced next-gen console titles, and when I say next-gen, I mean PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series. I know it's now it would technically be called current-gen, but because there are still so many people, they can't get their hands on it. For them, it is the next generation. So I'm just going to call it next-gen. 48% of all announced next-gen console titles are built in Unreal Engine. So imagine that. Imagine you're coming to the game industry and you have Unreal Engine in your tool belt and you can just go to any of these studios and say, hey, I already know the engine you're using. What a leg up you have like compared to the competition. And look at all these studios there that are already using Unreal Engine. Like this is just a very small subset of them. We have uh, Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, um, Housemark now and uh, Double Fine, CCP. I'm just like... Uh, <laughs> pointing at them and saying them out loud. But yeah, like it is absolutely crazy how many studios are using Unreal Engine right now to ship next-gen um, console and PC games and even mobile games. But let's move now a little bit outside of games. So like, let's say you uh, learned Unreal Engine and uh, you were in games or you thought you wanted to be in games, but maybe it's not right for you. Don't worry. Those skills are not wasted. Um, one of the closest uh, other profession you could go to would be, for example, film and television. So uh, Unreal Engine is being used in quite a few ways when it comes to uh, film and television. Not just as, like, as you can see there in the video, uh, this is from Mandalorian. So the Mandalorian for Disney Plus, we're using an LED uh, in-camera VFX stage, is what we call it, ICVFX. So they were using an LED stage to um, broadcast Unreal Engine footage as background. And that would often make it as final pixels into the movie. And when I say final pixels, it means that um, no CT work additional has been do do done on it. Of course, color grading and stuff like that, but it's just straight from Unreal Engine to your TV. Uh, but it's also being used in pre-production. So, um, Oftentimes, director would want to storyboard their uh, scenes, but nowadays they can just get a team to actually roughly draft out what the scene is going to look like in Unreal Engine and look at it like that and go like, okay. And actually, um, you can see um, a making of online for the new Planet of the Apes movies, the War of the Planet of the Apes and stuff like that with by Andy Serkins. And there you can see footage of them uh, using Unreal Engine to kind of like, yeah, draft out the scenes. And then the final scenes look almost identical in terms of composition. So it is a really valuable tool. And uh, yeah, so it's being used for pre-production, in, in camera, final pixels. Uh, even Matrix uh, used it for the new one, for the dojo scene. And it was really important for them to use it in Mandalorian because the Mandalorian is using a fully reflective armor. And how do you do that with just normal VFX? It's almost impossible. There's so much work. So imagine being able to just put the entire background scene to be like what's going to be visible. Like number one, the director can see what's happening straight in camera without having to imagine it and then do it later on. Number two is that the actors can react to it live and you can get better performance out of them. And then number three is that you get realistic lighting hitting the entire scene. And that includes getting reflected of windows and uh, for example, yes, the Mandalorian's armor. This is an old slide. I think it was from 2019 that we made it. So the number is much, much higher now. And uh, But most of these 
movies here were using Unreal Engine in some way with pre-production, except The Mandalorian. But nowadays, uh, um, I'm, I'm going to update this slide uh, so that eventually I'll be able to have all the movies that are actually using Unreal Engine for final pixels. But I do have an up-to-date slide, and that is this one. So these LED stages, these uh, sound stages, we have now more than 250 in-camera VFX stages across the globe. And this is, this is a huge boom recently because out of all these stages, just in the last two years, over 200 of them have been built. So this is a super new industry and they are starving for talent. Uh, a lot of them are actually also in Europe, I think over 50. Uh, most of them are in the UK and Germany uh, of, of the European continent, and then they're spread out uh, more. Uh, I think we even have one in, at least one in Finland. So yeah, this is definitely a viable option if this is something you want to get into. But it's not just in film and uh, TV, it's um, also in live events that aren't pre-recorded. So this is something we're seeing quite a lot, uh, like happening now, for example, in news. Like here is an example uh, in the video, it's from the Weather Channel. Uh, so they're using both an um, LED stage and also, well, mostly they're using green screen actually. So this scene right here, this scene right here, uh, actually all of these are using green screen. So you don't even need super expensive, you know, setups. You can just have a green wall behind you, Unreal Engine. And like even this one here where the tower is falling down, that's not even a green screen. That's just composited straight on top. So uh, for st um, studios, companies, uh, institutions that are using, that could be using Unreal Engine, like you just, yeah, put a green screen, uh, plug in Unreal Engine, and now you can have these amazing um, visuals to really engage your audience. And right now it's being used in over 150 TV networks around the world. And I just wanna emphasize again, I've been doing, I've been doing this, like these presentations for at least a year. So I don't even know what the number is at right now. And some of the examples are the Weather Channel. Childis Gambino actually used Unreal Engine for one of his live shows, and then Fox Sports and NASCAR. It's also architecture, engineering, construction. And this is not, this is not some new industries, you know, that are just getting funded. These are not some startups. Like these are old, mature humongous industries that have a lot of money and like our civilization have been building on for many years and they have started now to use Unreal Engine. So uh, they now need developers and they have a lot of money to pay. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you also have that option. And uh, this is used for stakeholders and for customers because, you know, showing someone blueprints that's that's just like oh yeah i can see some lines how, how is this in 3d i don't know now being able to just uh import your digital blueprints blueprints into uh digital twins which is an unreal engine um product and being able to add pedestrians 3d models and these are all, all like for no additional cost by the way you can get a library of um mega scans uh, quicksol which is like uh, rocks trees fo foliage uh, all of these, and people and buildings, uh, windows, stuff like that, you can put all in without having to pay anything extra. And uh, yeah, it just works. And then you can put it, you can pixel stream it through the browser, you can have the customer install it on the PC, or you can even put it in VR, which is how they actually started using it. So you could put on a VR glasses and start walking around. Automotive and transportation is seen starting to use Unreal Engine. Um, in this example, uh, Chevrolet was using Unreal Engine to uh, create live, uh, or to, yeah, to create ads. And uh, what they did was they created the skeleton of a car that was littered with QR codes. And then they would film that car and overlay a car, an actual car on top of it in real time. So what you're seeing here now, like this is all happening in real time. This is them just filming their little skeleton car. And there, there you go. Rendering a CGI car straight on top of it. Uh, and now you don't have to like put a car in there, film it and go like, oh, we should have used the blue car. No, you can like try it all live and like change it also in post. Design and manufacturing, also using that. 
Um, so brands are, they're turning away from these expensive and slow design approaches, like, you know, the physical design prototypes, uh, resin models. And now, nowadays, you can just take your CAD model and import it straight to Unreal Engine to add 3D visualization to it uh, for, yeah, virtual reality, on-the-fly customization, and all, all powered by real-time engines like Unreal Engine. And these are some of the companies that are, all, are, that are already using Unreal Engine like this, Toyota, uh, BMW, Daimler, Remtech. And it's, they're not just, uh, we're not just using it for like engineering and also, yeah, for the uh, cars for visualizing them for ads. We're actually seeing them inside of cars now. So uh, this is an example from General Motors that are actually using Unreal Engine to display the HUD in the car. So you have the 3D car there. This is all running Unreal Engine inside the car. And so we're seeing, seeing Unreal Engine now being used for human machine interfaces, not just in cars, but this is uh, one example. Mm, yeah, this is something that I really, really like. This is like near and dear to my heart because this is actually using Unreal Engine to help the world training and simulation. When it's too dangerous or expensive to train in the real world, or when you need a platform for experimentation, analysis, prototyping, or machine learning, you can rely on Unreal Engine. And in this video that I'm showing here, they're actually training doctors and nurses for um, operations that otherwise would maybe not be possible or would be risky to train them. So you can have some difficult operations maybe that they've made into now this virtual reality training application. And I'm seeing this being used in schools and also at companies. And they are needing people that are creating these experiences. They need developers, they need modelers, they need lighting artists, they need like all, all of these people. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else to say about this. Also, uh, actually a good example, uh, there's this College of Fisheries in Iceland and uh, they're using Unreal Engine now because it's really hard to train them, the students, because like you, you can't take over a fish processing plant, shut everything down just to get the students in there, like a whole class. Or you can't go on a, on a ship, a fishing uh, ship or fishing boat and, you know, say like, hey, shut everything down um, and then we have to like sanitize everything. Just he, he downloaded, the teacher downloaded the 3D models of the machinery that they're actually using because uh, the vendor provided that. Put it into VR in Unreal Engine and just let the students like actually see how the uh, machines work, how to use them and even how to repair them. So this is a very low cost and accessible way to train the next generation of anything, any professionals, anything where uh, hands-on needs to be trained in a environment that might be dangerous or expensive or just impractical. Then we have advertising and marketing. Uh, this is kind of like, this is the last slide with all the jobs. Uh, I guess it's kind of catch all, like, like you can do all sorts of stuff. In this video, we ha we are seeing um, the mill may making a trailer for, I think it's monster.com. And everything that you're seeing there on screen of the big hairy monster moving around, it's live. And they're uh, using the hand tracking hardware to just, you know, move the monster around. And like, imagine how fast this is to just try things out, to prototype a little bit uh, for the director to be able to decide like, yeah, the ad should look like this, the ad should look like that. All of this would take so long to tween and keyframe like painstakingly in advance, being able to just make the first cut, just, you know, either using VR controllers or hand tracking, or even uh, I know of one studio in Scandinavia, I can't remember which, Sweden or Norway, that are making this children's show and they're using a controller to animate the character, to quickly uh, make the episodes. And then what you can do afterwards, after you have recorded your, um, your inputs, whether it's through a controller, a VR controller, or hand tracking, you can use Control Rig, which is inside of Unreal Engine, which is our anim in engine animation tool. You can use that uh, for a, like um, additive animations, or you can like 
change them, and you can do that both at runtime and in advance, and then save it as a new animation. So you don't have to be stuck with the animations that you get from those recording sessions. You can edit them afterwards. So those were a lot of industries that you can consider uh, taking your Unreal Engine skills going into. They are all right now in need of Unreal Engine skills. And the thing is, uh, real-time skills right now are in heavy demand. So again, th this is, uh, we did this, uh, we got these numbers a couple of years ago, so the number might be even higher now, I'm not sure. Uh, once we do an, a new, uh, you know, gathering of the numbers, <laughs> I'll be sure to update these slides. But even, that, even though those are over a year old, we have 315,000 visualization real-time jobs just available, needing to be filled. And the real-time jobs have grown six over six times faster than the overall job market. And out of that, like demand for unreal engine skills, it is projected to grow over double over, uh, over the next 10 years. So like this isn't going anywhere. For you, there are multiple ways to learn. We have Unreal Online Learning, which is um, our own learning hub. And actually we have now made it so that all of the videos from Unreal Online Learning are now in our new dev community uh, hub. So you should check that out, dev.appygames.com. Um, of course, the classroom and remote training from schools and uh, post-education institutions. We also have education events um, where uh, Unreal Engine might make a road tour and uh, have presentations and stuff. And then we post regularly industry guides on our website, unrealengine.com. Um, I think I'm quite good on time. I still have seven minutes, but I guess we were a little late because the last presentation went over. So I'm just going to say, like, are you making something unreal? If you're making something unreal uh, in the Nordics and the Baltics, so in Northern Europe, you can just email me. I, you are in my region. You can also reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. It's Flossari, F-L-A-S-S-A-R-I. If you're not in uh, Northern Europe, we have uh, evangelists all over Europe and actually all over the world. So you can uh, reach out to your local evangelist. We are listing them on our website. You can, I think you just Google Unreal Indies and uh, or just Unreal Evangelist and you might be able to find uh, all of us in our regions. Um, but yeah, like our job is to be here for you for any questions you might have. If you have any questions about Unreal Engine, uh, the metahumans, mega scans, quick rolls, anything really. You can just go ahead and click with us. Thank you all. Bye bye.